Welcome to Jesus is Lord. We encourage you to stand on God's word through all circumstances. Remember things only work together for our good when we fellowship with Jesus daily. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you, Lord. Father, I just come before you, Lord, and I just ask you to break this bread, God, in my mouth, Lord, that I might speak it, God, that it would come exactly the way you gave it to me, Lord, and that the glory and the honor would be yours and yours alone, Lord. For, Father, you are the beginning, you are the end, beginning and the end, you are the author and finisher of our faith, God. And, Father, there is none besides you in this heaven and earth, God. And, Father, we know, Lord, that you want to give us, God, the fullness of your kingdom, God. Father, you want us to walk in the places, God, that, that you paid the price for us to walk in, God, because you came here to be an example, God, of the life that you would like us to have, God. And Father, we just thank you for each and every person here, God. Open up their ears to hear and their eyes to see, God, that your will is that we walk in the kingdom, God, as children of God. That we're bought with a price and that we're to walk as you walk, God, in your kingdom, Lord. We just praise you and give you all the glory and honor, Lord. Yes. Father, we praise you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We glorify your name this morning. Hallelujah. For, Father, you are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord, for what you've done, Lord, and each and every life and what you're going to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I have, uh, she's asked me to speak several times, and I would never get back. And uh, so finally she nailed me down because uh, I don't know, I, I guess I kind of get nervous or whatever when I get behind the mic, but when, uh, when God uh, does a thing, you know, he prepares you. And uh, before she asked me, he had me stewing on something for about a week or two. And uh, when I came in here this morning, I knew that I had heard from God because the name of my message is walking in God's kingdom and walking in His character. Because the character of God is not signs and wonders. Amen. The character of God is not gifts. That's right. The character of God is love. The character of God is peace. The character of God is love, long-suffering, temperance, joy. That's the character of God. And you know, that's what God wants us to portray to the world. That no matter how ugly they are, that God loves them. And that because God has loved us, that we've got so much of God in us, the character of God in us, that His love and all these fruits are hanging off our vine. And that what we have is drawing them to us because we are able to give them that same love that Jesus gave us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so as I began to study today, or last week, he gave me the Lord's Prayer. And, you know, a lot of times people have prayed that prayer and prayed that prayer, and it's so short. And, uh, they, they, you know, there's a lot of meat in that prayer. And, you know, they, a lot of people will pray that. Now, you know, you've seen uh, they repeat the Lord's Prayer and walk out and they say those words and they don't never even pay no mind what they really mean. So we're going to have, you know, you've seen these uh, chocolates that you buy on um, um, Valentine's Day. Well, what we're going to have this morning is we're going to have a sampler. We're going to have a little bit of that. And we're going to have a little bit of this. And we're going to have a little bit of the other. But guess what? They're all going to have chocolate and caramel and nuts. They're all going to be good. 
there ain't going to be none of them cut chocolates that you bite into and oh, I don't like that feeling and throw them all out, you know, all oh, that orange and that other, that, ah. oh man, we will have none of that because all of God's word is good. Oh, it says taste and see that I am good. Hallelujah. So we're going to die. We're just going to start eating God's candy this morning. And we're going to walk in this Bible. And we're going to learn how to pursue the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Hallelujah. Because that's what it's all about. Hallelujah. So let's go. Uh, the Lord's Prayer is located on chapter 6 of Matthew. And it says, he tells her, he tells them that God, that the Father knows what you have need of right. before you ask. That's right. Well, guess what? He knows what you have need of, and guess what they needed? The verse right after this, you need to know how to commune with God first of all. Isn't that something? The very next verse says, and so pray in this manner. In other words, after, the, after this way, you commune to God. Commune to God like this. And it says, Our Father. Think about that. A lot of, you, need, you know, take this uh, word home and just chew it. Our Father. Think about that. Our Father. A father is a person that has a lot of responsibility. He provides. He works. He disciplines. He does. He's responsible. He's the head. Our Heavenly Father is the head. He said that He was, you know, it's like, and He is the one that created us. He created us because He wanted to love us. And He wanted us to love Him in return. All right, it says, Hallowed which ye are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How many people do you know today that really when they pray, start reverences, reverencing God first and praising Him and really think about how important His name really is Amen. and how blessed His name really is? You know, the, it says that uh, the Lord's Prayer is not only a model given to us by Jesus, but it is a model for us to live our life by. Amen. That's what Hallelujah. And it says the Father's name should be worshipped, adored, reverenced, praised, lifted up above all, and glorified with all your heart. In other words, when you go before the Lord, you already know that He loves you. But He needs to be, because that's natural. It's a sorry father that when the child is not born that he doesn't automatically love that child. That's right. That's right. That's right. But it does a father wonderfully good to know that that child loves that father yeah. with a love that you can't hardly take away. You know what I'm saying? That they don't even want to leave their presence. I've seen such, but some children that love their parents so much or their daddy. I've seen little girls and little boys get their daddy's leg and hug it and their daddy can't hardly walk where that child loves their daddy so much that I don't want you to go nowhere. You know, and that's what kind of love that we should have for the Father because he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son because he wanted us to be free Yes. of what we done, our disobedience. Yes. He wanted to make it up. He wanted to make things right for us. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to do. See, that's a characteristic of the Father. He said, I'm willing to do whatever I got to do to bring you back to me yes. so we can be like we once were. Yes. Yes. Now that's love. Yes. Yes. See, I know how you feel. Because if it was one of my sons, let me tell you, my oldest son, has been in trouble in his early days. And I tell you, it breaks a mother's heart. And I'm telling you, you'll do anything in this world for that child. Let me tell you, you check carry that baby in your womb and you feel it moving and you fall in love with that child before it's ever born. 
that baby hears your voice and you feel that baby, it's yours, you've got your heart, and honey, you're willing to do anything in this world for that child. And you'll cry out to God. And I tell you what, a person that had never had a children don't know. They don't understand. They can't tell you, well, I'll do this or I'll do that. Let me tell you something. Each and every one of us were, were sinners and we were undone without God. But God loved us in spite of what we were doing. And many times we were spitting right in his face. But he loved us anyway. He loved us anyway. You know why? Because I'm going right into this. Because people have got the wrong idea about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And it says that uh, hallowed be thy name. In other words, when you go to him, you go to him because you love him and you want to tell him, oh, how, what a privilege it is to have him as your heavenly father. It says thy kingdom come. And you know what that he wants you to do? He wants you to desire his kingdom. He, he wants you to say, Lord, I want your kingdom to come in me. Yeah. Bring your kingdom in me, Lord. What have I got to do to bring your kingdom to me? What have I got to do to be more like you, Lord? Hallelujah. I want to be like you, Jesus. I see you loving me. I see you reaching out to me. Show me what I've got to do in my life. What's got to change in me, God, where people can see you in me? Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And he says, uh, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Well, what is it? Let me tell you some, some little notes that I wrote. A lot of people have talked about these scriptures, you know, that God's will is in heaven is nobody sick. I agree with that. And there's nobody that's poor. And everybody, everything is well in heaven. I agree with that. God wants that on earth. But guess what he wants more than that? He said, uh, the kingdom of God, it's God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. God's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. God's kingdom is something that can't be touched or seen with the eyes. God's kingdom is an invisible kingdom that's only brought by desire. It's, already, it's, all, it's only brought unless you go after it. Because it's, not, it's something that's got to be sought for. It's a righteous kingdom. And it says, what, and what is righteousness? I'll tell you what righteousness is. Righteousness is when you love your enemies. See, that's the thing. Oh, the church is missing it, honey. That's what the world's got to see. The world's got to see a God that is so, so good and so loving that you're so full of his love and compassion that somebody could come up there and do I don't know what all to you and you could still love them. I'll tell you what brought I'll tell you what brought the thief on the cross to repentance because he saw him nail Jesus to the cross. He saw him do all these things to him and spit on him. And he saw all those religious people walk up to him and say, if you be the son of God, come off. And you saved others, you can't save yourself. And then he saw all of them telling all these things. But then at the same time, he heard them say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. They heard him praying. They heard him calling on God and that man said this must be the son of God because I've never seen anybody under such attack, under such uh, uh, pain and agony reach out and praise and ask God to forgive somebody yeah, yeah. hallelujah that's how he knew, that's how he knew this man is a righteous man because he had never seen such things in the religion, in the tabernacles, in the uh, temples. He hadn't seen such love. He hadn't seen anything like that, that somebody could be nailed to a cross and still filled with love. That's right. That's right. And what did he say? He told one of them, he said, don't you fear God? He said, we deserve what we're getting, but this man, he's done nothing. Hallelujah, but God, Jesus said, he, then the, the thief said, F -f -f he said, Jesus, remember me when you get to your kingdom. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. The very last 
moment of his life. See, that didn't make no difference to God if he came to him 10 years ago or one minute before it was over. His love is everlasting. It doesn't matter when or what condition you are. He wants you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants you. Hallelujah. And it said, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. Let me tell you, it says, do good to them that hate you. Hallelujah. I had never seen so much mess as there is in the body of Christ. So much competition. So much hatred. So much envy. So much of this mess that ain't worth two cents. And we're being robbed every day of the power of God. Of the love that's not being doing but great miracles. Let me tell you, did you ever hear Jesus one time when, well, I've got a healing ministry. <laughs> Signs and wonders follow me. Uh-huh. No, no, no. He was always giving his self love to the very dirtiest person. He lifted them up. And he said, how about the lady that was caught in adultery? Now, let me tell you something. Every probably, she probably, man, I'm, I'm just, it's just pitiful. Because I feel like that she had been used until she had been used up. Hallelujah. And all the religious people, they didn't have no use for her. They were ready to stone her and throw her away. Hallelujah. All them religious people, you ain't good enough to go to my church. You're going to have to clean up, lady. You're going to have to quit wearing all that mess. When you get so you can behave yourself, you can come in. But no, Jesus said, where? And he said, all of you that are without sin, cast the first stone. Hallelujah. And all her accusers, one by one, put the stone down because they knew they won't live in it. Oh, they had their cover up. Honey, you can cover up a pig pen and on the outside and make it look like the most beautiful building around you can build it, make it look like Taj Mahal. But when you open that door, it's still going to be a pig pen. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. And woo. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, Jesus is the Lamb of God. He was put on this earth. He said, I call the righteous, not the, the, uh, the righteous to dependence, but the sinners. That's what I came for. Hallelujah. So he lifted her up. He didn't. He said, I lifted her. He lifted her up. He said, Where are thy accusers? He said, And he said, I don't condemn you. Go in peace. Go in peace. See, everything that they see, that's the thing. Oh, it's not the outward. It's not what we, how how professional we are. It's not the car we drive. It's not the house we live in. It's none of those things. It's the spirit of the living God. It's that fruit tree growing within us. Hallelujah. And it says, uh, it says that, uh, Pray for them that use you and persecute you. That you can be like the children of your Father in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the just and the unjust. Rain on the evil and the good. How many times? And it's bad in the the body of Christ. People get uh, happy and they rejoice when certain people in the body are going through things. They say, hot dog, hot dog. They they get so glad. They get glad. They don't have a bit more feelings for you than they have more sympathy for a cat or a rat in the yard than they do some of the people of God. And how in the world can we bring the love of Christ to a dying world when we can't love each other? You know what? We use that scripture. Oh, they know that we're just his disciples by his, by the way we love the brethren. Oh, well, honey, we don't love the brethren. Because let me tell you something, honey. Deborah Jones has had to sit down and pray and pray and pray and say, God, give me the compassion you had. Give me the love you got. I don't have it. Come on, let's get honest today. We want the kingdom of God. If we want the kingdom of God to come down on us, we got to get in there where the king is and tell him to pour it on. Pour it on, Lord. Pour it on. I don't care what you got to do to me. Strip me naked because I don't want no.
no more of this influencing me. I want you and you alone. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then it says, uh, for he, you know, he makes the, the rain to pull the just and the unjust. Let, then they, look, let me tell you something. He blesses people every day that spit right in his face. That cursing, GD this and GD that. But he still gives them the breath of his body. He still blesses them with good health. He still gives them a family. He still gives them a good job. And if he was like most Christians, he'd wipe them all out. Hallelujah, but he loves them. He's up there. And I think that that's one thing he intercedes for us, that we would get the love of God in our heart and see the need of the people out here like he saw it. Hallelujah, they're looking for somebody that will really love them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says that the the kingdom of God. It is the kingdom of God is influenced by the Holy Ghost and that alone. The Holy the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. That's right. It's not meat and drink. It's not of this world. So why do we try to keep on possessing it using worldly things? It says you can't do that because the things of God's kingdom are spiritually discerned. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says the tree is known by its fruit. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Matthew 12. Well, let's see. 33. It says either make the tree good and its fruit good or either make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt for the tree is known by its fruit. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? Works are not fruit. Works are not fruit. So, uh, why is it that everybody goes by what a ministry, what kind of miracles and stuff they see? Why do they do that? And then they don't really ever under, you don't ever hear them say, well, they're out doing these things on the street or they're helping the poor or they are, they've got places for the orphan, they've got this and that, but they're showing any love. No, it's all just the entertainment. Right. It's made, got the Christian world has made Christianity an entertainment. Right. An entertainment, a feel good. I want to feel good. I want to, you know, I want to know that I'm going to have the same thing today as I got tomorrow that I got today, that same feel good. Hallelujah. Do anything that I can to make me feel good. It's all about me. They go up there and sing that song, oh, it's all about you and God, they're lying all the time. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. You, you, you take the cars away or you go up there and I say, you take the stuff away or you go up there and tell them they can't do this or they can't do that or you turn them off, you go in front of them accidentally scratch the car and see what happens. Hallelujah, yes sir. When that mess can be gone in just a twinkling of an eye, hallelujah. God gave it to you, so why in the world are you so possessive over it? It's not yours to start with. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 It says that uh, a corrupt tree is known by its fruit. In other words, hey, guess what? The fruit of your lips will tell what kind of tree you've got. What's in that heart? Because let me tell you, what's going to come out of you if somebody comes up here and accidentally drops a two-ton boulder on your toe? What are you going to say? You're going to say what's going to come out, honey. Let me tell you something about what did Jesus do. Jesus had already said, I do say only what the Father says. In other words, he had his mouth, his heart, and everything filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Father's words. Hallelujah. 
He was filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, another person that is a good Acts chapter 26. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Acts 26. <clears throat> when he called uh, when he called Saul, let me tell you, Saul was a bad boy. He was a bad dude. Everybody, man, I'm telling you, somebody's got letters against you and going to have you put to death. Somebody got that kind of authority. Uh, they're bad. Well, look, let me tell you something. Did you know, just like the uh, radical Muslims and religions like that, do you know they're so dedicated? Think about it. They are, they are so dedicated. And not only they believe it with all their heart, they believe it right. that they're willing to go in there with a bomb and be blown up Jesus. to further their their beliefs because they believe they're doing all our favor and that they're going to get this and that and the other. But man, you can get all, uh, all, all you got to have is uh, one day the car won't start and you done fall back on God. Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, they're so dedicated that they don't care how many people they kill or what they do. Yes. But man, we see, that's the thing. See, the kingdom of God. It's a place where you've got to get it in your heart that I want the Lord so much that you know the Bible says that the, that the kingdom of God suffered violence. In other words, you got to, I'm getting through no matter what. And who I got to move out of my way, I'm getting it whether you want it or not. If you want to be lazy and you want to stay right where you are, move over, I'm going forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's the only way that you're going to come into the kingdom of God, the way he wants it. Is that you've got to press your way through because he said that as straight as the gate, narrow is the way. That means it's not easy. It takes effort. Let me tell you, let's get everybody, almost everybody here. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Join us each week at the same time for Jesus is Lord. And when near Greenville, stop by the Bread of Life Tabernacle two miles past Welcome Middle School on Highway 11 and join us as we worship the King and enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Until next week at the same time, this is Brother Ken Jones asking you, Is Jesus your Lord? The river and the river is moving in me. Uh -huh.